subsurface rights. What does subsurface mean? What does the word, what does the prefix sub mean? Under. Underground, exactly. So these are things that are underground. These are rights um, that are underground. And those are appurtenances. Now, as the owner of the property, I own the appurtenances. Here's where some of you, here, I really want you to zone in on this because some of you are going to get confused about this for sure. And it's going to be something that shows up on a test probably on a license exam. Remember earlier I said you can sell or lease the whole property or you can sell or lease parts of the property. Do you think you can sell an appurtenance without selling the property itself, without selling the land? Do you think you can sell someone an appurtenance? Yes. Remember an appurtenance could be a right, it's a, it could be a restriction. Oh, yeah. Do you think you could sell a right? Yes. 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 So like these subsurface rights, for example, could I sell the right to any oil on my property? Could I sell yes. that? Yes. Yep. yes. I could. Now here's the thing. As the owner of the property, mm -hmm. I have the right to sell the subsurface rights. I don't get them back just because I want to sell the property to somebody else. So let me give you a hypothetical situation here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a hypothetical situation and, and I'm just looking, I'm looking at Beverly and Michelle here, they're, as my screen's looking different people, they're the ones I see right now. So I'm gonna click on Beverly and Michelle. Let's say Beverly owns a piece of land and she has sold the oil and natural gas rights to me. So I own the right to any oil or natural gas produced on that property, but I don't own the property. Beverly owns the property. Is everybody with me on that so far? Are we good? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Michelle would like to purchase the property from Beverly. Can Michelle do that? Sure. Yes. And Beverly can sell it to her, correct? Yes. When Michelle purchases the property from Beverly, what is Beverly going to have to inform Michelle of? Uh, your subsurface sub 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 uh, rights or belongs to you? It, the, the subsurface rights are not coming with this purchase, right? The, the, mm -hmm. This battery's not included, right? <laughs> this is mm -hmm. it, this is the warning label. I'm selling you the property, but the right to the oil and gas belongs to this other guy over here that you've never met. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so Michelle now owns the land, but who still owns the oil and gas rights? You, you do. I, I do. Duh. Now let me ask you a further question. If I own the oil and gas rights, can I sell them to somebody else? Yes. 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 And does Michelle have any control over that? No. 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 So let's say Michelle Michelle hates joy. I mean, Joy just got one of them faces, you know, just in it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you look like a lovely person. But Michelle can't stand Joy. They know each other, and she cannot stand Joy. And Joy just wants to get under her skin. And she finds out that I own the oil rights to Michelle's property. Could Joy come to me and buy those oil rights from me? Yes. 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 Uh -huh. And then who's going to be out there? oil well on Michelle's property and have the legal right to do so. Joy will because she owns those rights separately. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. And, and here's the thing. So now Michelle decides she, I don't like this deal. This sucks. She, I won't get rid of I'm, 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 mm -mm, I'm out of this. I ain't gonna deal with this. Can Michelle sell the property? Yes. She can, and so she decides she wants to sell the property to Kaylin. But what does she have to tell Kaylin? About joy. That joy right. um, uh, this, this joy over here owns the oil and gas. Right? You see how once it gets separated, yeah. it could be a mess, right? Right. So it could be a mess. Could we fix that mess? Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. What What could Michelle do? What if Kaylin says, look, I'll buy the property, but I want it all. I want the oil and gas rights, too. What could Michelle do? Try to buy Joy. Buy them back. She could buy them back. She could buy them back. And this happens a lot, folks, not with subsurface rights so much, but with rights to things like timber. I think Beverly mm -hmm. said she was from Nash County. I grew up in yes. Nashville County. In the eastern part of the state, you'll find a lot of farms 
where the timber rights, the tree rights have been sold to companies like Georgia Pacific or Weyerhaeuser or those companies that make lumber and tree uh, and uh, paper. Um, and, and so farmers to get excess money years ago sold the rights, not just the trees themselves, but the, the rights to future trees for that property. Does that make sense for everybody? So the, the, yes. you know, Georgia Pacific not only has the right to come in there and cut the trees down, but they have the right to replant more trees. And then when those are mature, come back and do what? And I'm again. That's what it means when you sell the timber rights to Georgia Pacific. So you've got a lot of these family farms in eastern North Carolina that sold these timber rights. I mean, and they sold them 50, 75 years ago, long time ago. And now you've got kids and grandkids that have inherited the farm and they want to sell the farm. But the next owner or the buyer is like, I want to buy the farm, but I don't know if I want to deal with Georgia Pacific. I want to hunt out here. I want to buy this as a hunting reserve. And it's not going to work if they come in and do what? Cut down all the trees. Cut down all the trees so it's not useful for me. And, the, and here's what the owners of the property are like. Yeah, they own the rights, but they haven't cut those trees in 40 years. We've never even heard from them. It's not that big of a deal. But that new buyer is not going to be satisfied by that. So if those people want to sell that property, what are they going to probably have to do? Go to Georgia to buy the paper. Go to Georgia, Georgia Pacific and do yep. what? Buy, the buy, the buy those rights back. And buy those rights back so that they can reunite them with the property and sell it all as one bundle. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah, so if Georgia Pacific changes their name within, you know, if they started with one owner as Georgia Pacific and then they transfer their name or, you know, yep. so part of the, the company, if they don't specify that in that paperwork, can you kind of, is that like, you know, a done deal? Well, it, it could be. That gets to real, be real murky. Most of the time, most of those companies, when they merge and change things, they transfer, or they do one like overriding <clears throat> document that transfers all of their assets and it doesn't necessarily have to specify each individual one. It just says all of our assets transfer to this new, like, do, for example, how many of you remember when CPNL existed, Carolina Power and Light? How many of you remember CPNL, right? Well, oh, yes. CPNL was bought by Progress Energy, right? And right. so when CPNL was bought by Progress Energy, everything that CPNL owned, including all the easements across all those properties, transferred to Progress Energy. And of course, Progress Energy was then bought by Duke Power. Duke. And the same thing happened. So generally speaking, when those companies merged like that, all of their properties and, and, and assets just transferred to the new, the new entity, whatever that happens to be. And now Duke, Duke Power is known as God. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's true. Right. Exactly. Somebody said that they were considering merging with Dominion, which would be just a behemoth. I mean, because Dominion is, is, is as big as Duke. I mean, that would be the whole East Coast, basically, in one power company. That's got to they be. just announced that the monopoly that deal is gone. That's all I was about to say. It seems like a monopoly. Elizabeth, did you say they announced that deal is not going to happen? It, well, the pipeline deal is, is off. It's on uh, the front. Did, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Deal, yeah. Which, I knew that. Which was a partnership between Duke and Dominion. I know that was, yeah, they shut down the pipeline. Um, so look at this. This is like a hypothetical question here. It says, Tom owns a farm in Nash County and sells the timber cutting rights to international paper. 30 years later, Tom's children have inherited the farm's property and sell it to Carla, who currently has the right to cut the timber from the farm. International paper. paper. International. international paper. And it doesn't matter how many times that property gets redeeded, international paper is going to have those timber cutting rights. Are we all good with that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a quick question right quick. Sure. If I sell my subsurface rights to someone that, that and I live on a residential property, that still doesn't mean that they can just come in my backyard and dig a hole to those rights. That they, they still have to respect that it's my land. They would just have to, I guess, try to go to another property and dig under or something well, like that? Well, it depends on what the actual document is. When you mm. sell them those rights, it's going to be documented what exact rights you've sold to them. Most of the time when you sell the subsurface rights, 
there is some grant of access as well, you know, because obviously you have to access the property somehow to get the subsurface rights. Sometimes mm -hmm. they may not need that because like you said, they may already be on an adjacent property. And so they just need the right to go under your property, you know, but uh, it just depends on what the, you'd have to look back at the document to see exactly what rights they had. You know, I was dealing with one about six months ago that was a timber one. And what it actually said was that uh, it was uh, it was uh, Weyerhaeuser was the company that had the rights and they had the rights to to the timber um, forever. Um, but they only had the right to enter the property once every five years to either cut or um, maintain the timber stock. So they had a, you know, a window every five years to access the property to do that. So and that, was, that was the way the document was written up. And so I, you said you were from Edgecombe County. I'm from Terrell County and there's a lot of farming. And to the access rights, a lot of where I'm from, a lot of people will be funny where you can access the farmland from. Like they, some farmland, they won't let you access right off the main road because it's too dangerous. So they have to create like an entire route to get to that farmland and right. people hate. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Air rights are appurtenances. So those can be sold separately. Um, you know, that's happened in, in several instances in big cities, uh, for example, somebody, there are instances where, um, companies purchase air rights to build high-rise buildings. Somebody else still owns the land, but they may purchase the air rights to build up from uh, the, the there. That can happen as well. Water access rights. Now, water access is important. If, if somebody, let me ask you this question. If somebody buys waterfront property, sometimes it seems to me that- Do you think it's gonna be important to them to, be able to access that property? Is that going to be important to somebody who purchases waterfront property that they can access the water? Yes. Yeah. 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 I would say that's probably going to be pretty high um, on somebody's list of important things. Um, I would just say it's going to be real high. Um, let me catch up on a couple questions here I just noticed from the chat. Uh, Angelica asked, uh, could you put on the lease that they make those changes before the lease ends? Um, uh, you can put anything in a lease you want to. Um, um, and whatever written terms go in a lease, everybody's got to honor. So uh, there's really no restriction in most cases of what could be in the agreement. Just the understanding is when the property is sold, the agreement has to be honored. Um, uh, do leases have to have an end date or can they go on indefinitely? As a matter of fact, Anna, most of them do go on indefinitely. Residential leases in North Carolina specifically go on indefinitely because they say the lease is for a year or the lease is for six months, or the lease is for two years. But if you don't give us notice, it's going to automatically mm. what? Those of you that have renewed, renew, renew. they're going to automatically renew. So, and technically they do go on forever until somebody decides they want to end them. Um, but when you purchase waterfront property, the right or the ability to access that water becomes really important for people. And we need to understand what those rights are. What right? Here's why this is important for you as a real estate broker. If you're selling somebody property that borders on water, it's waterfront. Now, if it's waterfront, that's probably important to the buyer. We just said that. What's one of the first questions the buyer's going to have about that water? How can I what? Access it. How can I access it? How can I use it? Who can use it? Is it everybody that can use it or is it just me? Is this my water and I'm the only one that can use it? Or is it everybody's water? Do I, where, can I put a boathouse? Can I do this? Can I do that? Those are the questions they're gonna have and that's why we have to talk about this. But now, just for reference, everything we are talking about thus far is for the national section of the licensing exam. When you take the, the licensing exam, it's split up into two sections. It's split up into a national section and a state specific section. I will always try to make sure I bend over backwards to tell you when we're talking about something that is state specific. Thus far, everything we've talked about would be true on the national part of the exam. Is everybody with me? So all this is fair game for national part of the exam. I will always try to let you know when we're talking about something that's specific to North Carolina. 
that doesn't mean this would be the law in all 50 states. It just means it's the law in a very high majority of the states. And so therefore it's tested that way on the national section of the exam. Water access rights is one of those things. So this is the way water access works in North Carolina and in the vast majority of other states. The right to access the water is based on primarily one thing, the type of water it is. And there's two categories here. They're hard to remember. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Riparian and littoral. People come up with little tricks and you know, whatever works for you works for you. But I want you to break it down into two different categories because I think that's going to be more helpful. Can, can we agree that more helpful is usually better? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So here's the two categories I want you to think about. This kind of water, public water, or this kind of water, private water. Mm -hmm. Those are the two. Now, I'm not telling you riparian is public and littoral is private. What I'm telling you is the better way to think about water is some water is public water and some water is what? Private. Private, private water. Because that's going to tell you how the rights work. So let's talk about these different types of waterways. A river. Do you think that's public or private water? Private. A river? Public? Public. 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 It can be. And, and why would a river be public? It goes through a lot of properties. It goes through a lot of people's properties, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. How about a lake? Public or private? Public. 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 How about a stream? Private. I don't hear a lot of conviction in your voice. Public. Uh, again, that could cut through multiple properties. That could be either. Good. How about either or right there, right? Yeah. We don't know for sure. How about a creek? Either. either. Either or. These are easy. Public. Who does that water belong to? Everyone. The public. Everyone. Who can access it? Everybody. 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 Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. Yep. If it's a public waterway, who has the right to use it? Everyone. Everybody. Everybody, everybody does. Now, that does not mean, and I am not saying that everybody has the right to stand right here and access the water. Why does everybody not have the right to stand on that shoreline and access? Because it? they don't have because access. They, because they don't own that shoreline. That belongs yeah, that's to private. That's, that's private. Yeah. Does that make sense for you guys? Yeah. yeah. That shoreline is private property. But this waterway is what? Public. Public. Public property. <coughs> so I have, as a member of the public, the right to be on the water if it's public water. I don't have the right to be where? On the shoreline. shoreline. On the shoreline. <laughs> Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. let's talk about how we tell if it's public or private water. If it is not navigable, non-navigable, it's not a big enough body of water that it can be navigated. You cannot go from place to place on it using a, a standard size personal watercraft. Like, a, you know, just say, a, think of a 20-foot boat, power boat. If you can't navigate with a 20-foot power boat on this body of water, then it is... Non-navigable. Non. Or what? Private. 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 If you can navigate this boat, what kind of body of water do you think we have? Public. Public. 
Public. Navigable bodies of water are public bodies of water. They are owned by the public. Non-navigable bodies of water are what? Private. Private. And therefore, who do you think owns them? The landowners. The landowners do. That's exactly right. The landowners not only own the land in that case, but they also own the what? The water. The water, the water itself. If the body of water is big enough to be navigable, then it belongs to the public. If the body of water is small enough that it cannot be navigated, then it belongs to the landowner. Now, this is only, let me, let me stress something here, and you need to pay attention to this. This is only for bodies of water that border on more than one person's property. If, if I have a thousand acre farm, could I theoretically have a lake in the middle of it? Yes. yes. But if the lake is completely surrounded by my land, even though it's big enough to be navigable, it's what kind of water? Private, private, private property. When we say navigable, we mean that you can navigate from one person's property to the other. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. If it, if you can't navigate from one person's property to the other in a normal size boat, then that's private water. If you can, then it's public water. So let's look at why that matters. On the left, and I've got to erase. erase. Ooh, ooh, I echoed there. Um, let me erase these here. Um, how do I do that? Um, there we go. Somebody's echoing me from on two devices. It'll do that. Um, uh, when you look at this picture here, you've got one body of water that's not navigable on the left. Do we all agree that that looks like you couldn't navigate a boat through that? Correct. Yes. Right. And on the right, you have a very much navigable body of water. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. The body of water on the left, private water or public water? Private. 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 This is private. Oops. Back up. Private water. Private water water. The body of water on the right, what do you think it is? Public. 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 Here's why that matters. We need a property line. We've got property owners. Stop doing that. I want my pen back. No, oh, I want that. Don't you love technology? <laughs> Sometimes. I want it to take away that. Not doing what I want it to do. Uh, all right. Anyway, we got a private body of water on the left and a public body of water on the right. The property lines will change based on that. Here's the thing. If it's private body of water and we've got a different property owner on each side, guess where the property line is going to be? In the, in the middle. middle. In the middle. It's going to meet in the middle. But if it's a public body of water and the water belongs to the public, guess where the property lines are going to be? Shorelines. Shore Shorelines. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's the only difference. It's the only difference is whether where the property line is located. If it's not navigable, is everybody following me on that? So yeah. that's, that's water rights. Here's why that matters. On that private body of water on the left, on that private body of water, what you've got is the ability for the property owners to tell other people they can't fish in that stream because the water actually what? Belongs to them. It belongs to them. But on that public body of water, you can't restrict anybody from being on that water. Now, you can restrict them from accessing your shoreline, but not from being on the water itself. Mm -hmm. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. Now... Oh, I have that slide in there again. Let's talk about, those are all riparian bodies of water, by the way. Riparian, 
riparian means it doesn't have a tide. The, the rest of these are littoral bodies of water. Littoral means it has a tide. If it has a tide, what do you think? Is it going to be public water or private water? Which do you think? Public. 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 If it's big enough to have a tide, in North Carolina, you're talking about the Atlantic Ocean, you're talking about the, the, the Pamlico Sound, the Albemarle Sound. If it's big enough to have a tide, it's going to be a public body of water. Hopefully that makes sense for everybody. With any public body of water, who does the water belong to? The public. The public. Everybody. The public. So, I mean, it, it, it's pretty clear all this out here belongs to the public. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I see that last slide show real quick, please? I have a question. I guess it's just kind of bothering me. So, let's say you have a piece of property and you want to own the shoreline to a certain distance. But the water technically is in the shoreline. Could you still do that, or would it still be considered public? Ask that again. So you have a beach house, and you want to own part of the shoreline, not just the pier that it's attached to. That way, I mean, you want it. Can you per technically purchase the shoreline and the rights to it? What kind of body of water are we talking about? A public body of water. Public body of water. So you're talking about the you're talking about the coast, or yeah. on, the, on the coast. On the coast. That's that's exactly what we're about to talk about here. Okay. okay. So it's clear that the body of water belongs to who? Public. 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 Now we said whenever there's a public body of water, where does somebody's property line start? The shoreline. At the shoreline. At the shoreline, and that's still true here. Here's the problem with this body of water, and this is why the toral bodies are a little bit different. Tides mm -hmm. change. The tide changes. Does this shoreline change every day? Yes, yes. it does. Twice a day, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you come out here in the evening, this is going to be a different picture, is it not? It is. Mm -hmm. Where is the? Where do you think is the most logical place to put somebody's property line? If I own this house back here. I own this. I mean, obviously, I've got a property line here on this side, and I got a property line here on this side. But where is my and my property goes out to the street on the back side? But how far out this way does my property line go? High tide. High tide. Right there. The tide doesn't cross. The high tide. That's where. So, Cassie, to answer your question is how much of that shoreline, that beach, do I own? I own to the high tide line. Past that is yeah, all public. That. that is crazy. So you'd be better off buying a house on all a, of that belongs on a private public. pier. That way, you'll even have more space, and you can control your space because it'll be on a technically a private shoreline. We're, uh, we're, repeat that one more time and make sure you got it. So, Let's say you see how all of these houses is right here. And on the beach access, more than likely, you're going to have a house not even 100 feet from you because it's beach property. But you have, you can get sound water. Like, I grew up on a waterfront property, but it was a private pier. Right. Technically, the water was still public, and anybody could access it, but you had to have access to our pier, right. and you couldn't. So you'd be better off buying shoreline on a, let's say, a smaller, like a sound or a lake than you would a beach because you can technically buy yeah, far more. more control. Okay. Yes, far more control. For example, on a lake, you own right up to the what? Shoreline. To the water. And you always yeah. own up to the water. No matter where the water is, you always own there. But on the tide. actual beach, you own to the high tide line. That is crazy. Yeah, that's all public property out there. Okay. So is it different in other states? There are a bare handful of other states. New Jersey would be one that's notable among them that treats this dramatically differently, but this is the case in the vast majority of states that have, and of course, this only impacts states that have coastlines, you know, because 
bodies uh, and Michigan because the Great Lakes are big enough that they actually have a tide. So. Yes, I, I have a question right quick. I just went on a trip to Miami mm -hmm. um, probably about a year ago, and a lot of houses in Miami have boat houses that are in the water. Mm -hmm. So how would that be private? If it's in a public, um, if it's in the public water, Florida has created laws that essentially allow for that to be treated as private property. In theory, it's not. In theory, it's public property. But Florida has created carve outs, you know. But you're not expected to know those because you're not getting a license for Florida. In North Carolina, if it's in the water, it belongs to the public. So you can actually access someone's pew if it's in the water in North I Carolina. Not, I would not recommend it because um, people are <laughs> armed. But right. um, in theory, under the law, yes. What about on the intercoastal waterway? In theory, if it's in the water, it belongs to the public. In theory. Don't try that theory, though. Okay. <laughs> I would recommend testing it. Okay. Um, are, are we good on the, these water access rights? Mm -hmm. Now, as yes. far as test questions you might see from this, they'll yes. ask questions like, you know, Tyler owns this property on Lake Gaston and he sells the property to Anna Lee. Um, what's Tyler's rights as far as water access? Well, does Tyler still have the right to access the water? Yes. Yes, yes because the water is owned by who? Tiger. The public, but does he have the right to access the water from that property? No. no, no, because he sold that when he sold the property. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh -huh. Tyler could still, if his favorite fishing spot is two feet in front of the shoreline at, on the property he just sold to Anna Lee, he could be out there every day fishing. And Anna Lee, like, dude, you sold, you sold the place. Won't you get out of here? Right. Doesn't matter. He's in the water. He can do what he wants to do, but he can't actually access the shore. Okay. And that's kind of thing I see on the test about that. But is that different because you just said about you had said something about um, you know a lake versus like a creek. So if it was a creek, um, Tyler couldn't go over there. If it was a non-navigable creek, he couldn't be on the water at all. That's exactly right. Lake oh, Gaston is navigable. Right. Uh, but Lake Gaston is navigable, so it would it would be a public waterway. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But if he sold you know property on a creek, and let's say the water was so shallow he could wade up the creek, and he still likes to fish in that spot, no, he's trespassing then. You know because that water actually belongs to Anna Lee that he sold the property to. So I I know we haven't really we haven't went over this yet, but I'm just curious. So for someone who owns um, land on a beach. Would you have to grant someone like an easement to get to that public water since it's on the the beach? Because some yeah, and even... that's why I'll back up to this picture. That's why in North Carolina we have places called public beach accesses because we recognize the issue here is if this beach belongs to the public, how are they supposed to utilize it if that's private property behind that line? And so every so often you will see public beach accesses which allow yeah. for people to get now of course they don't have to stay right there in front of the public beach access once they're on the beach they can spread out and they can go far and wide as far as they want to but they better get back before high tide because unless they plan to swim back to that public beach access when they're at high tide if they're walking they're trespassing that's that's the general rule if it's high tide and your feet are dry you better own that property or you're trespassing now walk right in the edge of the water and you're still on public property just FYI, not that I'm recommending. Okay. Um, we also have the last of these kind of a pertinent rights is the right of support. Basically, we owe each other support. And that, that extends to society, but it also extends to land. We cannot, even though we own a piece of property, we can't just do anything we want to on our property if it creates problems for neighboring property owners. You know, as an example, can I dig a hole in my backyard? Yes. Yeah. Can I dig a hole 20 feet deep in my backyard? Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
can I dig a hole 20 feet deep in my backyard right on the property line where my neighbor has a fence? No. No. No, because what's going to happen? Collapse the fence. is going to fall in. Their fence is going to collapse because it no longer has support from my property. Does that make sense for everybody? So yes. we, owe, we owe our neighbors this right of support. We cannot, you know, even though it's our property and technically we should be able to do anything on our property, we cannot undermine somebody else's property with our actions. And 